So we've got our Bifrost puddle in place. It's interacting with the container. Um, so what we want to do now is create the splash as her foot lands in it. Now we could just create a dummy piece of geometry like a sphere or a cube, but rather than do that, we're actually going to use her actual foot to get the correct shape and we'll animate that so that uh, it's moving in the correct motion so that the splash well it, so that the splash is more realistic depending on how she's moving so let's select the main model duplicate that let's scroll down here and we'll just call it foot I'm just going to isolate that and all I'm going to do is just select the foot Just invert that selection and then delete it. Simple as that. And I'm just going to assign a basic Lambert for no other reason, just that, just that there's no main texture on there. Um, it's just a personal preference. So we have the foot. So let's hide the main model just for now. Now at the moment the foot doesn't do anything, it doesn't interact with anything. So just as we did with the container, we need to select the liquid, select the foot model, and again go to Bifrost, add collider. So now the particles will interact with the foot. So that's part one. So let's skip ahead to maybe frame 30. Actually let's make it frame 40. I'm just going to set a keyframe there and we want the foot to, let's say it wants to come forward and down to there so if we just do it over 10 frames oops, that should give it enough speed so let's move the foot back here up slightly like so and I'm just going to flatten the tangents so that comes down with more of a thud I mean we could go to frame 135 move that forward slightly and up slightly just to give more of an arc but that's that's basically the uh, the animation of the foot so again let's select our bifrost liquid go back to frame 0 press play And now what we should see is the foot interacting with the particles and then the particles should be erupting out of the puddle to create the beginnings of our splash. Now we could have added in the animation anywhere we wanted to and the good thing about uh, Bifrost is we don't always have to start at frame zero. If you look over here, you have a start frame. So if, let's say, our splash was at frame 500, we could always start the simulation at frame 480. So you get 20 frames of a run-up, then you get your splash, give it another 20 frames afterwards, you know, so you don't always have to start at frame zero. So there we should have our foot coming down, like so. And there it's interacting with the puddle and you can see the water is now erupting out of the puddle so there we've created our splash and it didn't take very long to do basically animating the foot specifying it as a collider and then the particles just automatically interact with it and do what they should As we scrub along a bit more you can see the particles come out even further and then this is where the container is probably not big enough because they'll be coming out here to the side and then falling down but for this particular illustration we would probably be happy with if we just scrub through maybe something like frame 50 so we've got the splash I mean we could maybe 
have it going a bit higher but now we've got those basics in there so I'm going to stop that there because we've got the frames that we want so now we've got those basics all set we've got the foot interacting with the bifrost particles uh, the animations happening now we can start to play around with how the actual splash looks and how the particles form and sort of uh, if I select the liquid here we scroll down here you see we've got lots of uh, things to play around with down here and this will all affect um, the way it looks the thickness of the water um, how big the droplets are um, there's lots of things for us to play with um, but they're mainly on these two attributes here we could go in and play around with the container uh, or the emitter here but we'll leave those for now um, and I think this is probably a good point to take a break and what we'll do in the next video is we'll continue looking at the uh, particles uh, start to shape uh, the actual puddle and the splash itself and look a bit more at some of these uh, attributes.